Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. May God's uh, presence be a blessing before us. Uh, let's see, today, uh, have any announcements? Are there any announcements that need to come before us? Don't forget about the opportunity to participate in the summer mission program. Other announcements? Let us open our hearts then before our great God. Please stand if you're able. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Heaven and earth are filled with the glory of God. Our first hymn is number 477. Ye servants of God, your master proclaim. Into our hearts 
by means of the Holy Spirit, who is God's gift to us. Now I'd like to call on Team Jesus. So I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. When you were in school, did you ever get uh, some kind of meat that was ground together and you really didn't know what it was, at, 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 like on a sandwich or in a casserole or something like that? Huh? At school at your lunchtime. Um, yeah, yeah, some kind of maybe a ground meat that you didn't exactly know what it was. Well, it, sometimes those things are a mixture of stuff, but we didn't recognize it as chicken or ground beef or, or you know, maybe turkey or ham. It's just kind of a mishmash together. Well, if so, it was kind of something you didn't recognize, right? Well, uh, the reason I'm talking about that is because that's kind of processed meat and it might have some artificial ingredients in it and it's something we don't recognize. But that's never true with our walk with Jesus Christ. It's never artificial. There's never anything uh, artificial that's added to it. We have faith in Jesus Christ that comes from the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we can recognize kindness in the name of the Lord, righteousness in the name of the Lord. It's like the different... Uh, now, there are uh, there are things that we might hear from the world that are supposed to be the way of the Lord, but we can recognize it if it's good, right, true, or holy. And we have the example of the Bible to show us what's right, what's wrong, what's, uh, what's glorious in God's name, and what's not. And so... Uh, what I'm saying is that uh, God's glory is before us by the cross of Jesus Christ. There's nothing artificial about it. There's nothing uh, added that's from the world. It's just God's blessing before us that gives us the promise of salvation. Let's, let's bow our heads in the name of the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of your word, which always comes before us. Direct our path so that we might see what is righteous and good and true. In our Savior's name, we ask your blessing. Amen. Thank you for coming.
Let us turn our hearts now to the precious Word of God, and we're going to share today from the book of Genesis, chapter 11. And we'll share uh, from verses uh, 24 to 32. When Nahor had lived 29 years, he became the father of Terah, and Nahor lived after the birth of Terah 119 years, and had another son and daughter. When Terah had lived 70 years, he became the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Now, these are descendants of Terah. Terah was the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran was the father of Lot. Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his birth, in Ur of, Chal of the Chaldeans. Abram and Nahor took wives. Uh, the, names of, the name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Bilkah. She was the daughter of Haran the father of Milcah and Is Iska. Now, Sarai was barren, and she had no child. Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife, and they went out together from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. The days of Terah were 205, and Terah died in Haran. Here ends this blessed reading that comes today from the book of Genesis, and it is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Living Lord of love and truth, we ask that you might shine the light of your glory onto our path on this day and on all days that unfold before us. And we give you thanks for that blessing. We ask, Lord, that you would come before us and grant us wisdom in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Today, as it says in the bulletin, we're going to kind of dig into where uh, where Abraham came from. This week, we're going to begin a series of discussions that digs a little deeper into Abraham and all the people uh, around him and uh, his call to go to Canaan and be the patriarch of our faith. What are we missing here? Oh, okay, that's a good idea. Why don't we put it over here and point it toward the screen here? I meant to do that, actually. Good, all right, thank you, Jim. All right, so we're gonna learn about Abraham. Uh, the father of our faith starts out as Abram, and his name's changed to Abraham, uh, a number of years later, at the age of 99 years old, God makes a covenant with his servant and then changes his name to Abraham. But for now, I'm going to try to refer to him as, as Abram, but I could slip and call him Abraham once in a while. The biblical discussion of Abram starts out in this chapter that we have read, chapter 11. The first part of chapter 11 talks about the Tower of Babel, and then the conversation turns to a discussion of, of Abram's lineage. The lineage account starts with Noah, and then goes to uh, Abram. And between those two, including those two, there's 11 generations connecting these two giants of the biblical narrative. Now, 
I did read, nor am I going to go through in detail every generation from Noah to Abram. But <clears throat> Abram was a descendant of Noah's son Shem. You may remember that the account of Noah said that Noah lived to be 950 years old. In this account given in Genesis 11, one can honestly do the math and figure out that Noah was still living for a significant portion of Abraham's or Abram's life. And Shem also, as it turns out, uh, lived at the same time as Abraham and Noah. And it turns out also that they may have had a significant part in Abram's story. Oh, wait a minute. So I've created this chart, and I'll refer to it. Uh, uh, from the account in Genesis 11, it gives uh, where the ages and the deaths of people's birth. Uh, so you just crunch the numbers, and this chart shows that here's, here's Shem's death and Shem's birth, and, and then if you draw a line from Noah, his death, and then go to Abraham, it shows that Noah was alive for about 70 years of Abram's life. And this, it turns out Shem actually lived longer than, than Abram. Now, Terah is this one. Terah was Abram's father. And, and uh, it shows that the, the he was born here and died well, probably when Abram was about Oh, maybe a hundred or something like that. So, and and this, you have to understand that this chart has five generations taken out of the middle of it, so it's easier to read. So there's five generations of Abram's family that should have been right down the middle here. So, uh, we can look at the chart and see that Noah, and you can see where the flood happened, uh, and uh, the birth of, like I just said, the birth of Shem and Terah. Uh, Abraham is at the bottom. If you draw that line down, Noah's death uh, on this timeline, it, it shows that they were contemporaries. So when Abram was born, there were a lot of generations of his family uh, uh, gathered in a place called Ur, or more completely, Ur of the Chaldeans. So here's a map that shows, uh, here Ur is right there, and that would be in, in Iraq right now, there's a Persian Gulf, okay. So uh, we look, uh, let's see, where am I here? Uh, uh, okay, so this is where Ur is right here, and you know, eventually Abraham went up here and then ended up over here in the land of Canaan. Uh, so, just so we get a, an idea of what the, the map was, there's quite a bit of distance between where, where Abram was and where he, where he ended up. So, just wanted to point that out. So, now, we want to look at the family tree of Abraham. So, T Terah was Abraham's father, and Abraham had a brother Nahor and a brother, Han brother, brother Aaron. Uh, and Terah had three sons, like I just said, uh, and it's believed that Haran had uh, four children, Lot, and then a daughter here, a daughter here, and then this chart moves the third daughter right over here, because uh, 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 Sarai was Haran's daughter. So that's, that's the way it, it works. Uh, as, let's see. And two of the people here on this map, Lot and Sarai, play an important part in the journey that we're going to uh, look ahead uh, and, and uh, discover about uh, the father of our faith, Abraham. 
Uh, let's see. Like I said, Sarai eventually came, became the wife of Abram. Haran, who was Sarai's father, and Lot's Lot father, uh, who, as we'll discuss, traveled, Lot and Sarai traveled with Abram and played an important part in the biblical narrative for many years to come. And we're going to talk about that in the next couple weeks. The scripture account in Genesis about this group that I just talked about is kind of brief. And it's brief about the reasons why Abram left her. And the account tells us that Terah was the father of Abraham, that Nahor and Haran were Abram's brother, and Haran was the father of Lot. That's what the things in Genesis tells us. The account says that Terah was still alive when the family left for Ur, and that Haran died in Ur and did not go to Haran with them. The Genesis account also says that Abram married and Nahor married. Abram married Sarai, and Sarai was barren, and then it says Nahor married Milcah. And then the Genesis account says that Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, and that was Abram's wife, and together they set out from Ur, they set out from that place Ur of the Chaldeans, and their final destination was Canaan. But when they got to a certain place, they stopped and they settled for a while. And my guess is that that place got its name because of Terah's son who was not with them, Haran, who had died by that time. And they settled in that place, the sea. So here's uh, Ur of the Chaldeans. They went up along the river here until they got to this place. Herod, and that's where they settled for a number of years. In the account, if we are told that Terah, Abram's father, lived for 205 years and then died in this place right here called Herod. There's a pretty good chance that when this group settled here, I think it was just a wilderness place, but to honor the son and the brother that had passed, they called it Herod. Uh, that's all the information that we really get from the Genesis account. We're given uh, those details about the departure of uh, Abram from Ur and his journey eventually to Canaan. But there are some other writings that are contemporary to the book of Genesis that kind of make some suggestions and fill in some blanks as to the details of Abram's life before they parted for Canaan. It's called, one of them is called the Book of Jasher. And the Book of Jasher was written by the, the son of Caleb, and they were in the company of Moses a number of years later. Many years after Abram, uh, this Book of Jasher was written, and it's a biblical history that accounts to the time from creation all the way to Jasher's own days in the time of Moses. Now, this book is not a part of the Bible. We have to understand that. The book of Jasher is, however, referenced in the Old Testament. It's mentioned in the book of Joshua 10, 12 to 13, and it's also mentioned in the book of Samuel, uh, Samuel 1, 18. So since the authors of Joshua and Samuel used the book of Jasher as a reference, that gives it maybe some credibility for us to find out a little bit more about the father of our faith, Abraham. If it's a reference for Joshua and Samuel, perhaps we can give it some credibility to find out a little bit more about the journey of the father of our faith. Much of the contents of Jasher, that book, confirms the biblical narrative. And very little of the things in that book uh, contradict, and it adds a lot of things that we didn't know about Abram. The story offered about Abram fits perfectly into the narrative of Genesis, and it seems to clarify a little bit about why Abram le left Ur and why he decided to go to Canaan. 
So, in the absence of the details of the Genesis account, at the very least, this writing of Jasher gives us some ideas to reflect on some of the possibilities when it comes to the story of Abram. So, let's just uh, dig in. According to Jasher's narrative, on the night of the birth of Abraham, there was a bright star in the sky, and it was noticed by a number of the wise men in the land. And notice that there is a similarity between this story and the narrative of Jesus. The wise men thought that the king would deal harshly with them if they did not share this information that they had with the king. If the king found out about the star from another source, they would be in trouble with the king. So they felt compelled to go to the king and tell him about this bright star that definitely accompanied the birth of Abram. So the king heard about this star and they recommended that Terah, they recommended to the king that Terah, the father of Abram, should be compelled to bring this new baby to the king so that the king might slay that baby so that it would not provide uh, uh, or threat, threaten the authority of the king. So Terah and the king got together and Terah said, just give me three days to consider your request of bringing Abram in. So the three days was granted. After some thought, Abram's family decided to turn over a baby that was born from a union between Terah and a servant woman of the house of Terah. And Abram was hidden in a cave for 10 years. Upon coming out of the cave at 10 years old, he went and he stayed with Noah and Shem for 39 years. And while he was there, he learned from Noah about the flood, about the word of God. And in that same time, the people in, in the kingdom there had become extremely ungodly. And when Abram left the house of Noah, he found that his father, Terah, was worshiping a whole host of gods that were simply idols, contrary to the God of creation. So Abram tried to show his father how foolish it was to worship any other God than the God who created the world and all that was in it. In the process, Abram destroyed a number of Terah's idols, and this made Abram's father very angry. So Terah made the decision to go and tell the king of the real identity of his son, Abram. He told the king that Abram was the one that the king had intended to slay some 50 years ago. And the king was angry and he put Abram in prison and then had him thrown into a fiery furnace. Notice the fiery furnace has in common the parallel and parallel to Daniel. But because of Abram's faith, God rescued Abram from the flames. Now, Abram's brother in Haran was also thrown into the fiery furnace, but, and he believed in Abram's God, but because his faith wasn't as complete as Abram's, he did not survive the flames. And so that is how Abram's brother in Haran died young. The fact is that Abram survived, and that made a believer. That caused his father, Terah, to change his ways from worshiping idols to uh, believe in the God of Abram. After this series of events, Abram was no longer that welcome in the, this kingdom in Ur of the Chaldeans. Uh, and so they left, likely to escape the wrath of the king. It was Terah and Abram, Sarai, and Lot. They left Ur of the Chaldeans, and they headed for Canaan, just like, and then now we reunite with the 11th chapter of Genesis. 
So, like I said, they went from here, Ur of the Chaldeans, and they followed the river. You always have to follow a river so that you have water to drink, and then they ended up here. Okay. So, they got as far as Haran, and they settled there. They settled there until Terah, Abram's father, reached the age of 205, and then he passed away. So think about this. Just like we're often called to leave our lives, our former lives, behind in order to answer a call from God, it appears that Abram gave up his family so that he could be in the place where God could use him to accomplish his holy purpose. And this sets the table for what we're going to talk about next week in the 12th chapter of Genesis, where uh, Abram, after Terah's death, decides to answer or continues to answer the call that came from the Lord before him. So that's what we're going to talk about next week. For now, let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come humbly before you and ask that you would journey with us and help us to see uh, the commonality between our journeys and the patriarch of, patriarch of our faith's journey, Abraham. Help us so that we might understand the wonderful blessing of God's love and how that blessing has come to the people of God through so many generations. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us join now and sing the hymn that comes before us, which is How Great Thou Art, number 467.
join me as we confess our faith together using the Apostles' Creed. The words are printed in your bulletin. Let us confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Please be seated. We come now to the place during our time of worship where we uh, prepare our hearts for the time that we spend in prayer. A couple things I want to call to your attention. We want to continue to keep Doris Kennedy in our prayers. She has been uh, failing uh, a, a bit in the last couple weeks, and so just to keep her and her family in your prayers. Pastor Clint Zimmer, Joe Roberts, and Nancy Roberts, I believe, is in uh, North Carolina visiting her son, so uh, pray for her also that she might have safe travels. Martha Green with cancer treatments, Clint Dykoff, Dylan Preston, Jackie Brown, and uh, the family of Christine White who passed away uh, this morning, I understand, so we want to keep that family in our prayers. Uh, our shut-in folks, Eleanor Garrison, Grace Day, and uh, Alex uh, uh, Strangard, and and Barbara Anderson, and uh, those who are affected by uh, the what's going on in Ukraine, Joyce King, uh, Robert Tabriz, Gary Lovestead, Vicki Blair, Julie Shutt, and, and Penny, who is, continues to do well, but we should keep Penny Peterson in our prayers. Also, uh, uh, Cheryl's and Wendell's uh, daughter got married yesterday in the wedding, I understand. But son, I'm sorry, was was beautiful. But Cheryl's mother and father were not able to attend the wedding because of COVID, and then uh, her mother fell and broke her arm. So we want to keep uh, Cheryl's parents in our prayers. Others. My friend Pat asked to pray for her her colleague coworker Krista, who's <coughs> pregnant, and. Um, She's got something on the shirt, so I'm, we're just praying for healing and for the baby to, to be born when the baby needs to be born. So uh, Ellen's friend Krista is having a, a troubled pregnancy, right? That's, yeah? Yeah. Uh, I want to give praise to my grandma because um, she she had a car accident and um, she she was she was getting himself, herself into a recovery in her room. Um, um, I have to keep her safe so that way she doesn't want to drive anymore. So I want to keep her safe. So she was in a car accident. She's in the hospital or is she at home? Uh, she's at home. Okay. So Emma was in a car accident. So we want to keep her in our prayers. Donna? Um, so we want to keep the med slurs in our prayers at the passing of Bill's brother. Go ahead. Sherry Stricker is a lady who's going through cancer surgery. Sherry Stricker. Stricker. So Sherry Stricker, a friend of Cecil's, is going through cancer treatments, right? Yeah. Dale, Dale's um, boss's boyfriend hit his head. He's been unresponsive. They have him in Iowa City. And we're just praying for him, for healing for him. So a friend of Dale's hit his head and is uh, unresponsive in Iowa City. Others, Dennis? And for Donna's recovery. Oh, Donna had a procedure earlier this week and she's here with us, so that's a blessing, but let's keep her in our prayers. Any others? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask, Lord, that you would be uh, 
with uh, Cheryl's and Wendell's son and new wife that they might uh, celebrate a wonderful, loving marriage together. We ask, Lord, that you would be with Cheryl's uh, parents as they have uh, both been diagnosed with COVID, which caused them to miss the wedding, and also then that Cheryl's mother uh, fell and broke her arm. We ask that you'd be with them, bring your healing and loving touch to their hearts. We ask that you would be with uh, Krista, uh, an expectant mother who has had some difficulties with her pregnancy. We just ask that you'd watch over her and the, the blessed child. We ask also, Lord, that you'd be with Emma as she recovers from the car accident that she was in. We ask that you just care for her and calm her spirit and, and uh, bring her heart to a place where there is healing and love. We ask, Lord, that you would be with the Metzler family at the loss of Bill's brother. Just care for them and help them to find your peace. Uh, we ask that you'd be with uh, uh, Cecil's friend Sherry as she uh, goes through uh, this difficult time. Just care for her. We ask that you'd also be with Dale's friend uh, as uh, he uh, fell and hit his head. Just, uh, just uh, care for him that he might... Uh, uh, become responsive and respond to the treatment. Uh, we ask also a quick recovery for Donna as she recovers from the procedure that she went through. And Lord, we ask also that you care for uh, the White family at the loss of Christine. Just hear our prayers for them that they might find peace at the end of a difficult journey for Christine. Just hear our prayer that uh, she might be uh, uh, cared for by the grace of your hand that the, those uh, who uh, grieve her loss might uh, find your peace. We ask, Lord, that you continue to be with Doris Kennedy as she struggles uh, at, at the age of 103. Just care for her and help her to find your peace. We ask that you be with Pastor Clint as he uh, deals with medical issues. Just care for him. Be with Joe and Nancy as Nancy travels to uh, celebrate the blessing of her grandchildren as Joe uh, is cared for by their son. Just watch over them. We ask that you be with Martha Green uh, as she goes through cancer treatments. Clint Dykoff and Dylan Preston and Jackie Brown, just hear our prayer for these, your children, that they might find your grace and mercy, that they might know healing and encouragement in their time of difficulty. We ask that you'd be with Eleanor and Grace and Alex and Barb as uh, they uh, don't get out as well as they would like to, but they are an important part of this community of faith. We praise you that Penny is doing better, Penny Peterson, as she uh, is in the aftermath of her treatments. We praise you for that miracle of your blessing. We ask that you'd continue to walk with uh, Julie Shutt and Vicki Blair, Gary Lovestead, Robert DeVries, we ask you to just uh, help each of these, your children, to know that Christ is by their side, encouraging them and guiding them and empowering them along. We ask that you continue to be with Joyce King, just to sustain her at the age of her birthday coming up, so help her to find joy on that day, uh, I believe, 93. Just care for her in that time uh, as she finds joy in her birthday, but also as she uh, is sustained and her health might be sustained. I ask the Lord that you be with uh, all the folks around the world that are affected by so many uh, difficult things that are going on, the Ukraine uh, situation and uh, other uh, corruption and divisions and poverty and homelessness. Just we know that you care for each of those needs, and we ask that you sustain us as a country and as a world and as a community. We pray now the prayer our Savior taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's prepare our hearts then for the offering that comes before us.
sacrifice that we might find salvation and give thanks this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. 